your wrist a plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. So Nick Cannon, Sherry Shepard, Wendy Williams, the midday syndicated television drama continues. So Nick Cannon was asked to endorse the Sherry Shepard show and he refused. We're going to talk about why. Why did Nick Cannon refuse to give his stamp of approval and promote Sherry Shepard's upcoming TV show? And what's going on with his YouTube channel? But also, what's Wendy Williams got to do with all this? We're going to get into it this evening on the show. Y'all know it's early. I usually come on a little bit later, but I decided let me go ahead and, and, and power the bus up and bring it around early. So we're here. Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button. Okay, pay your fare. When you on my bus, you ain't got to donate. Although you can hit the cash app, you can send the super chat, but that is not required. But it is required that you hit the thumbs up and pay your fare. All right. Let's get into this because I have some thoughts and some information, and I think that this commentary is very necessary, okay? Let's get sticky and let's get into it, all right? The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black, and she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me, or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, now let's get right into a comment. What you eating for dinner down below in the chat? I'll let you know what I'm eating a little bit later. Real quick, grab your mental health before you get into this video. Don't dibble and dabble into whatever else unless you've made sure that your invisible problems and your spiritual warfare has already been accounted for, okay? Shout out to my new subscribers. Thank you for 9,000. I appreciate that. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and vibrant events, please be sure to subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I do appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Now, let's talk about it. Let's go ahead and let's talk about it. Leo, don't do it. Don't start playing with that bag when I'm live. You know, my, my cat, the co-host, he's here trying to act a fool. But nonetheless, come on in, hit thumbs up. Let's get into it, okay? Let's go ahead and unpack it. And I just want to take you back into the relationship of Wendy and Nick Cannon and how he was even introduced to daytime midday syndicated television. It's very important that you distinguish the difference because midday television is probably one of one of the hottest slots, if you will, when we talk about TV. If you can get on midday syndicated television, you have been commercialized enough to the point where they feel like we're willing to bet it all on you. It is the most lucrative um, spot and it gives you the most visibility, but it takes a certain type of person to appeal to the midday audience. The midday audience audience isn't necessarily the younger crowd or crew, if that makes sense. And the dynamic between Wendy Williams and Nick Cannon's relationship, it does come into play as we discuss Sherry Shepard and all that's going on with her and the YouTube channel and all that other stuff. So when I tell you this midday syndicated television drama continues, it really does. So as we begin to unpack this situation, we know that Nick Cannon was actually a stand-in host for Wendy Williams when she first, um, you know, began having unexplained absences before things got really bad. And again, it's important to note that he was, as a stand-in host, he did have Wendy's stamp of approval. Wendy was all for it, okay? Wendy couldn't get enough of Nick Cannon and the justice that he did her show. Now, while the show didn't last, we're going to get into that in a second, but they had a really um, a really productive um, business acquaintanceship, if you will, and a great working relationship. Now, that, that was actually the opportunity that Nick Cannon used as it catapulted him into the chance to get his own midday show named after him, okay? So it was an amazing opportunity for Nick, and he jumped at that opportunity. Now... While Nick is 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 a very talented guy, you know, you know he got 50 11 million children. Um, he's not, as I was talking about, that very lucrative spot of midday television. Nick Cannon is is just not the person. He's very talented, and I do find you know his conversations when he does sit down and he's entertaining outside of the Nickelodeon get up, he does have some interesting things to say, but it definitely doesn't appeal to the midday audience, and, and that's why the show only lasted for six months. But nonetheless. Um, you know, the production company, Detmar Mercury, which 
I, oh, the way they doing Wendy, I don't like it. Okay. So Detmar Mercury, in the meantime, he stands in for Wendy Williams for a couple of weeks. Wendy appreciated it because they have a great relationship. Detmar Mercury loved it, right? They they in the background getting their bird man hands together. Okay. They plot, they in the background hoping that Wendy's numbers contingent upon her return and her loyal fan base, they were depending on Wendy's numbers to propel Nick Cannon's numbers. Do you follow me? So as I begin to lay down what I'm telling you, Deadmar Mercury has always been, um, they've always been determined to use Wendy's viewership, to use Wendy's audience to propel other people. And that's why we're here right here with the Sherry Shepard situation. They're doing the same thing as they try to catapult her off of the back of Wendy and someone else too. We're going to get into that, okay? But despite the fact that the production company, Deborah Mercury, was dependent on Wendy's audience to fuel and propel Nick, it ultimately didn't work. It didn't happen. And like I said, stick a thumbtack in that because it's a clear example of them relying on Wendy's fan base to carry someone else. So this is a tactic. And look at Wendy's face right here. <laughs> See, because Wendy ain't happy about it. She ain't having it. OK, <laughs> but, you know, when you have production companies or people trying to steal other people's spotlight, right, or trying to use someone else's fan base to carry another individual, this is a tactic. It, it, it very rarely works. It, it really does rarely work. The two um, the two people, it only works in a couple of cases. And the only two cases it works is when the two people can play off of one another in a lucrative way. If they have some sort of working friendship, if you've got somebody on during the day in the midtime and the, and the mid person mentions the nighttime person and they have this consistent string of running jokes because they, they have some playful um, or conducive banter, right? Or even maybe a beef, right? Um, and they're always mentioning one another and they trade off with that. That's one instance where it works. Or if the replacement or the second runner up has enough of their own personality to entertain that very same audience, no two audiences are the same. And Wendy has very big shoes to fill, <laughs> pun intended, okay? Because we we seen Wendy feet because she showed them to us. You know, that's no shade, but a shade. Um, but honestly, there's there's Wendy has such a large personality, right? And she's paid her due. She's put in a lot of work, decade after decade after decade. And Wendy has some really hard shoes to fill. <laughs> Honestly, she does. All, all shade, all jokes aside. Wendy has some very difficult shoes to fill, okay? And if you haven't already taken the moment to hit the thumbs up button, make sure you do so, right? So let's continue with this story, right? So I gave you some, some, some backstory with the dynamic between Nick Cannon and Wendy Williams' friendship, right? And their um that their business relationship because it's they, they've never had any friction, which is pretty cool, right? Let's get into the refusal. Nick Cannon refusing to endorse, refusing to promote, put his stamp of approval on the Sherry Shepherd show. Let's get into that. Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. So we all know, we all know Nick Cannon has some serious commitment issues. He has an issue committing to relationships, but he's certainly committed to being loyal to Wendy. And you know what? I can't fade that because if it wasn't for Wendy and we know Nick Cannon is, is almost like Steve Harvey in a sense, he going to keep himself 16 jobs. Okay. And he better, you know, he got 16 and a half kids. God dang. But you know, if it wasn't for Wendy Williams and their positive working relationship, he would have never had his own syndicated midday television show and you know again it didn't last long we're gonna get into that in a second but Debar Mercury they specifically asked Nick Cannon to support to endorse to give his stamp of approval to the Sherry Shepard show but he refused he refused out of support for his longtime friend and business acquaintance Wendy Williams now Nick Cannon, he said he wouldn't endorse out of allegiance to Wendy. And this is a quote. And this is according to a source close to Wendy and what they told page six. And here's the quote. Nick Cannon would not endorse out of allegiance to Wendy. He wasn't cool with how they handled him and how they abruptly canceled his show and hustled everyone out of there and took their computers and shit. End quote. So take that as you will, right? You know, Dead Bar Mercury, they, they just like to do people dirty. If Sherry doesn't think it's going to be done to her, I don't know what to tell her, right? There's a lot of bad press already surrounding the Sherry Shepard show, and the show hasn't even debuted yet. Make it make sense? 
if she thinks they're setting her up for success, all right, sis, we're going to sit back and we're going to sip tea and syrup and we're going to watch. Um, but it, according to this source, they're saying, you know, Nick Cannon, he pledges, not pledges his allegiance in some cult-like fashion, but he's grateful for what Wendy was able, the, the door that Wendy was able, because was able to open for him because just because his show didn't last, it still was able to broaden his horizons and, and who knows what other deals he got right with that visibility. Uh, when he did have that show, some of those business deals could still certainly be in effect. If that makes sense, putting them in front of a lot of different brands and letting them know that he is palatable, although he can't necessarily maintain the attention of the midday crew or bunch. Right? So, he said he ain't promoting it. He ain't promoting Sherry. And you know what? I'm with him on that. I'm 100% absolutely with him on that. Deborah Mercury canceled Nick Cannon's show after just six months on air. And Nick actually stated in the final episode that the brief opportunity was a blessing and a dream come true, right? So he wanted to leave on a good note, despite the fact that allegedly, according to Wendy Williams' source that told Page Six, and Page Six is, is pretty goddamn incredible. Um, it, it seems like according to them, right at page six, that they kind of did him dirty in a sense too. They, they rushed him out of there to confiscated computers and all that other stuff. So I'm curious to know from you, Stickies, how do you feel about it? Ultimately, Nick was indebted, right? And grateful to Wendy for giving him a shot on her show, which ultimately led to his big endeavor. So the loyalty was pretty undeniable according to, uh, the Wendy Williams source now. Let's talk about this YouTube channel, shall we? Let's get into this YouTube channel because let me tell you something. Here we, here we go with Wendy with this face again because, girl, I feel you. Girl, I feel you. you <laughs> I'm not sure if you quite in your right mind yet, but I'm in my right mind. And I know they doing you dirty, girl. But nonetheless, let's get into what what's really popping, <laughs> okay? What's sticky with Nick Cannon's YouTube channel? That Mark Mercury can go to hell, I'm telling you. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right, and shout out to my moderators, moderators in the chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Sunstar and everyone else. Make sure y'all subscribe to the Backup Channel. We're going to be there later on this evening talking about Orlando Brown. We need to talk about Orlando Brown. It is the third link down below in the description box to the backup channel. You'll see TPJ Network in blue. Click that thing. Subscribe to that thing. Turn on them notifications. Okay. Now back to Nick Cannon's YouTube channel. Deadmar Mercury, they think they slick. And I honestly, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Nick Cannon's YouTube channel has been scrubbed and repurposed for Sherry Shepard's show. We can see here that Sherry Shepard already has 175,000 subscribers. She only has two videos. Make it make sense. A lot of people were upset about it. Let me tell you. Okay. I'm busy minding my business on social media this morning. And I see... <laughs> People are disgusted. They're like, I didn't subscribe to this channel because Sherry, you know, there, there was a, a little promo piece that they posted on Nick Cannon's former channel. And instead of making Sherry Shepard work, instead of making her work to build up her fan base, they decide to grift Sherry Shepard, all of Nick Cannon's former support and, and, and probably still current supporters. I think it's foul. And, and how are you teaching talent that they don't have to work to earn an audience, to engage with their audience enough to earn it, that they can just be gifted someone else's followers? It's pretty disgusting. It's pretty disgusting. Not to mention, and here again, you can see all of these comments from people who are just not satisfied. I didn't subscribe to this channel. I don't remember subscribing to this channel. It's true. I don't know why the show dropped Wendy like a bag of trash. Just because she had health issues doesn't mean they have to drop her. No disrespect to Sherry. She's an amazing woman. She makes us laugh. And there was more that this person had to say as well. But this, this, this is a really dirty move. And I personally feel like they are setting Sherry up for failure. A lot of people are ready to drag her along because how dare you just haphazardly put on someone else's shoes. You didn't tie them up. Tying them up would be paying your dues and making sure that you can actually build your own audience. But instead of her building her own audience, they're gifting her someone else's. And baby, that's going to leave a real bad taste in people's mouth. 
it was also revealed that this was the same plan for Wendy Williams' old Instagram and Twitter accounts and th that they will be repurposed for Sherry Shepard, right? Now, mind you, I'm not sure how true that is. However, it, it's you, you've got to think. Wendy Williams' channel got deleted, privated, whatever it is. We can't access it anymore. And <clears throat> what are they going to do with them? If they refuse to give Wendy access to them, what are they going to do? Because if they were just going to leave it there, they could have just left it up infinitely and made money and let the fans look at all the memories. But instead, the same way that they gifted, and we can clearly see that they gifted Sherry Shepard, Nick Cannon, because I, I, I did the search myself today. I, I searched Nick Cannon's show, and here goes Sherry Shepard popping up as the very first one. This is Nick Cannon's old YouTube channel. So what do you plan to do with Wendy Williams handles. You won't give her her Instagram. You refuse as if it's that valuable. So if you gifted this YouTube channel to somebody, if you're not going to gift Wendy Williams Instagram and her Twitter to Sherry, you're definitely going to grift it to someone because that's what you've done here. Now I've seen Sherry Shepard. Uh, what is, is, is it? Sherry show TV or Sherry Shepard TV. I was on there earlier today. Um, she has her own official Instagram, Sherry show TV and Sherry Show TV on Twitter as well. And they're both verified, right? So it seems like maybe she's trying to build her own Instagram or Twitter, but what talent are they saving Wendy's old handles for? One can only wonder. If they're refusing to give them back to Wendy, they're definitely saving them for someone else. And I think that they're saving them on the back burner to use, to use Wendy's audience to fuel someone else's career or success, which is foul. Because Wendy wasn't gifted anybody's social media to start her. She worked. She laid brick by brick. Messy action after messy action and got drugged by them wigs. Because we know Wendy's personality, her, 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 it's her antics. And everybody might not like her, but everybody damn sure is watching. Whether they enjoy it or whether they want to drag her later on. Wendy worked for all of those views and all of those followers. So Debmar Mercury... I think that you're setting Wendy up for failure, okay? Shout out to all 130 of us here in the chat. We got 73 thumbs up. Make sure y'all pay y'all fair and hit that thumbs up button. If you if you got a dollar or two, you can send a cash app or a super chat. I appreciate those, but they're not required. But let's get into my thoughts, right? Let's get into my thoughts because you know I got some thoughts. I study Wendy. Wendy definitely has been wrong a lot of times, and I have been very critical of Wendy. Oh, I've been very critical of Wendy to the point where some people think I'm hating. And no, I'm not hating. It's just... Right is right and wrong is wrong. And, and Wendy has definitely had some, um, you know, some slanted moments that I've had to call out. And Wendy has a pattern of coming for certain types of people. I call it out all the time. She comes for Nene Leak. She comes for these black women on reality television because they have large personalities. And Wendy's in competition with these reality women. I called this out when she was even well. Which is why she kind of had an issue with Jocelyn. Wendy belongs on reality TV because that's where she is best suited at this time. No, well, I mean, not, not necessarily this time. This is what I was saying months ago before she really, you know. But Wendy is, she just is not suited and booted for midday daytime television. It's a very confined box. You've got to read from the teleprompter. You've got to study these people's names. It got to the point Wendy was showing up to work dazed and confused out of her mind and couldn't even read the teleprompter. Don't even know who or what she's talking about. Whereas though when Wendy shoots from the hip, it's always something damning, something funny, something shady, but it's certainly something that's going to go viral. And she's sassy as hell. That's reality television tease. That's what Wendy is good at. And that's why I feel like she always had a bulk of hostility for black reality television um, talent in particular. And so, you know, I've been very critical of Wendy, but I also got to call a spade a spade. Wendy has paved the way. Any woman using a microphone, whether it be on YouTube, me, on syndicated television, on radio, whatever the case is, Wendy has definitely paved the way for any woman using a microphone in this day and age. It is a male-dominated industry, and it's difficult for women to break that down and to deal with the overage of men in the industry because there's a lot of misogyny, there's a lot of sexism, and all that other stuff going on. So I can be critical of her and call her out, but also give her her flowers at the same time, too. But Wendy has had some moments where she's been pretty disrespectful, but I digress. I digress. I could talk at length about Wendy Williams the same way I could talk at length about Tyler Perry, child. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 
Woo! <laughs> All right. But here are my thoughts about the situation. I, I've, I've, I've got a couple. And, and Stickies, let me know how you feel in the chat. Comment down below. Do you agree or disagree? How are you feeling? This show already has a plethora of bad press around it, and we pre-launch. I do not predict this, this show having a long-standing chance. I don't think, and this is no shade to Sherry. I'm not saying that she's like not cut out for TV at all or not cut out for entertainment at all, but can you tell me what Sherry Shepard's differentiating factor is? Like, what really separates her from the rest? What makes her so goddamn amazing and watchable and do you think that she'll even have any viral moments i doubt it you could bank on wendy having at least two viral moments a month at least can you tell me what's so special about sherry and i really don't mean that in a shady way but i'm just I'm just keeping it blunt and simple you know I, I think that it's really sad i think it's difficult right um it's disgraceful, rather, not difficult. It's disgraceful for this production company to think that they can boost up Sherry Shepard by spiting others, by spiting Wendy Williams, because it's very clear that Debar Mercury has um, a vendetta. <laughs> They've got a bone to pick with Wendy, and they want to humiliate her more than she's already been humiliated. Way more. Um, one thing about stolen attention, right? When people try to steal spotlight, whether they do it themselves or they allow other people to steal attention and shine, steal someone else's spotlight, it does not bear longevity. It doesn't. Stolen spotlight does not bear longevity. A lot of times when people try to steal someone else's spotlight, you're setting yourself up for embarrassment because you will never be able to provide what the original person did, create your own lane. That's the problem. How many people do we see on YouTube trying to pretend to be somebody else? And it might work for two, three, four videos or maybe a month. But after a while, you run out of steam. Dang, what? I, how, how can I try to mimic this person? You can't be yourself. And so when you're stealing a specific spotlight, a specific time slot, when you've allowed that bar Mercury to use you and pit you against Wendy to spite her, you were used. You're a puppet. They're out to get Wendy and they're using you to catapult that. You know, trying to be someone else that you stole the, the, the spotlight or the attention off of due to a lack of originality or envy. It's just a lazy copycat. It really is. There will never be another Wendy Williams show. And that's on period, whether it be from her. I was about to say raggedy, but let me bring it back. Whether it be from her brother who literally looks just like her without a wig they look just alike. It's crazy. Uh, matter of fact, all four of them look alike. Wendy, her brother, her mother, and her father, they all literally are like twins, quadruplets. Okay? There will never be another Wendy Williams show. It just won't. <laughs> Wendy had a certain grit about her. For you to pick at Whit uh, 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 Whitney Houston and Beyonce and get both of them to respond back to you, they called into your show to get you together. Who else? Who else? Name me somebody else that was able to get under Whitney and Beyonce's skin and have them call up on the show. Because despite the fact that they dragged her to hell, that still helped catapult Wendy to where she was. Those are some of the moments that really deserve to be on her walk of fame. Or I mean, like, she, what? What? <laughs> I think Sherry's going to have a rough time. Someone says, someone else says, Sherry's charismatic and funny, but she can't duplicate Wendy's personality, especially including the train wreck aspect. It's exactly. Part of Wendy's success involves her vulnerability and, and the embarrassment that came along with it. That is what makes Wendy so, um, so personable, if you will. Because thank you so much, Admins. I see you in the chat. I appreciate you saying congratulations. Um, I don't know why StreamYard doesn't pull those up, but part of Wendy Williams being so publicly humiliated, those were also viral moments that added to, that added to why she was such, such a, a media buzz, to be completely honest. 
You know, it's very clear that they're using Wendy's viewers. It's very clear that they're using Wendy's fan base because they see how plentiful and how powerful Wendy's following is. And let's be clear, Wendy has built up that following for over 30 years. It's decade after decade. From radio to TV, anybody who's a true fan of Wendy in this day and age, even if they, even for the people who were fans of Wendy last year and the year before, let's just assume maybe she's lost some followers, you know, or some fans with some of her behavior and her actions. Anybody who's a true fan of Wendy present day, they knew her and they respected her and they fell in love with her for her radio antics and previous appearances more than anything. So it wasn't just her getting the purple chair that just made her so awesome. Wendy done paid her dues. She'd have been embarrassed and dragged by the best of them, but she knew that was that 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 was a bit of Wendy's plan. Wendy knows how to work the media in her right mind, at least she does. And so Wendy's ability to purposely put herself in the fire, right? In the lion's den to be dragged by some of the best of the best people. Okay. Her and uh, Marosa went at it, Whitney, Beyonce. Hell, I love when Kiki came up there and got her together. And Wendy couldn't say nothing about it because Kiki was very elegant. She was very articulate. And she, but guess what? It was a vibrant moment that still got her the ratings that she needed. That still got her an additional season because it boosted up those views. So Wendy will take the hit and make somebody mad on purpose just so they can come on the show and get her together and keep it going. That, that, that's part of her specific strategy. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else can do that. And so, again, when we talk about this production company, Debt Bar Mercury, using Wendy Williams viewers and fans because they see how plentiful and how powerful they are. I hope they wake up and I see I hope they wake up and they see that because they're out of pocket for that. I mean, completely and absolutely out of pocket. I can't. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? So, you know. I hope that Wendy's fans realize this and they resist or refuse to watch Sherry Shepard. So, and I hope the numbers plummet. And it's not because I wish failure on Sherry Shepard. I just feel like the way she was grifted other people's platform and things like that. I feel like this would teach Debmar Mercury a lesson. Okay. Someone says Wendy lied about what was going on in her real life. Remember how she claimed that all was well in Huntersville when she got dragged by everyone and pretended she never heard it. Exactly. But that's part of her plan. You know, some people, they, they, they go through mess, they do mess and they get up and tell everybody, hello, you guys, that never happened. I know you've seen this happen, but that's not, that's a part of her lame PR statement. However, it was controversial enough. Even when people stand up and they lie, there's still people who are willing to do commentary and make videos about the lie, which gets people who didn't watch the original, you know, um, trickle of events, people watching the commentary about Wendy lying about that encourages them to go watch the original broadcast. Okay, let me hear and see how and when she lied. And whether she thought people were going to believe it or not, it still made the situation and her lucrative and it lended to the viral, um, the viral moments, the plenty of viral moments that Wendy Williams has had. But, you know, that bar Mercury, you can't be using other people's fans to 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 um, boost up other people. Make Sherry work. Do some real groundwork to generate interest around your new talent. Make Sherry work for her followers and for a fan base. OK, because the way I see it and the way a lot of other people see it. These platforms, she's going to be dragged. People didn't ask to see it. They're going to show up. They're going to make fun of it. You already got people who are comparing the. It's, you know, saying that Sherry Shepard is shaped like an uppercase P too, you know, and, and not that body shaming is okay, but y'all set yourself up like this by placing her in front of people who they didn't ask her to be in front of them. They're not subscribed to Nick Cannon or this, that, and the third. It just, it, it, it's not making sense. Trying to create an overnight celebrity fueled by a black woman who has paid her dues in the entertainment business for decades. It's not cool. It's not cool. <laughs> reason why I said Wendy knew that if she kept people talking good or bad she was on and popping exactly she understands that fundamental element of social media or, or just media in general because before like social media was a thing Wendy still made sure the tabloids because that's what they were called at the time the tabloids the magazines when she was in radio she made sure the media continued to talk about her no matter what Miss Mom says Sherry is born hey hey you know 
Sherry has not paid her dues, nor is her personality magnetic enough to attract or sustain long-term viewers. That's my opinion. If you disagree, let me know down below in the comments. That's whether you're on the bus right now catching us live or whether you're chasing the bus watching the replay. I want to know. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Any and all thoughts are welcome down below in the comments. As I stated earlier, the people who watch Wendy Williams on TV, they fell in love with her antics years ago. They fell in love with her personality years ago, or at least the controversial nature of them years ago on the radio and for all of her previous work and appearances. Wendy worked for every subscriber and every follower she had on those social medias. Gifting them to someone else is trash. But hey. <laughs> but hey. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Listen, y'all. Deb, Deb Mar Mercury. Deb Mar Mercury ought to be ashamed of themselves. I just want to go get Tyra Banks on them. Oh, not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this. When my mother yells at this, it's because she loves me. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? You go to bed at night, you lay there, you take responsibility for yourself. Sheikah Brown says, Sherry was amazing on The View. She applied for a job just like everyone else who was hosting the show. Fat Joe, Remy, Michael, any of the others would have taken the show if it was offered to them. I think not. Fat Joe can't hold anyone's attention. Um, being amazing on The View and being amazing in midday television when it's supposed to be Wendy Williams, at the, there's already a The View. So she didn't apply for The View. She applied to entertain people with hot topics and viral moments and commentary and what's going on on social media. And that's not anything that Sherry, that, that has ever been Sherry's strong suit. Nor has she had any viral moments on the show while she was hosting the Wendy Williams show. I, I mean, you know, so if, if, if it's not going to stick, then it's just not going to stick. I'm surprised the real lasted as long as it did. But they were more so attempting to appeal to a younger demographic who, to be completely honest, the midday television, syndicated television uh, slot doesn't really appeal to the younger person. It appeals to, you know, ma and grandma who watch Price is Right, then they watch the soaps, then they watch this and... You know, they literally still call it a television and not a TV, you know, so they still call things broadcasts and different, you know, so if it, we, but Wendy was different because she is of a particular age, but she could entertain all types of folk. Of course, she's going to entertain the people around about her age because some of those people grew up on Wendy, but Wendy spoke in a way with her being 50, what is it? 56, 57 years old. To the point where she can listen to 20 and 30 year olds still get a kiki. Sherry can't necessarily do that and speak to her age bracket and still pull the young folk too. And so Wendy was dynamic in that aspect. So um, someone said Sherry is definitely dry. Nobody wants to see her. Look, child. Wendy's social media is likely down because she has business issues with the guardianship. The guardianship only has everything to do with her money not um, not actual guardianship as in like a regular guardianship is kind of like custody, right? Think about when someone adopts a child, they have custody over that child. Guardianship, if it's not in a financial sense, it's, it's like that. Wendy is only in a financial guardianship. So that doesn't have anything to do with her Instagram page, all right? And even if, we were talking about like, let's say the financial aspect of the Wendy Williams show Instagram. They wouldn't shut it down. They would keep it making money. The whole point of this financial guardianship that Wendy Williams is in, it's not to stop her from making money. It's to keep someone else in control of her money. And why would they cut her money off instead of allowing it to come in? Especially because Wendy is being exploited and they want her money at this point. That's the whole point of this financial guardianship. So there, there would be no point for them to just stop Stop her from making money just because they have control over the money. That's not how a guardianship works because there's nothing. The financial guardianship is to make sure that Wendy Williams is making the best financial decisions that aren't a harm to her. Now, Wendy Williams' YouTube page, which does generate income, is not a harm to her. She's not making a wrong decision by leaving it up. So, yeah, no. Um, 
that's that doesn't have anything to do with the guardianship. Um, so look, 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 here are my final thoughts and my unanswered questions. And I'll share mine while you comment yours down below in the chat or the comment section if you're chasing the buzz, okay? <sighs> Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Um, you know, truly, Sherry Shepard, based on logistics, right? Based on logistics and Nick Cannon's refusal, right? Because he literally refused to endorse this show. The logistics and everything being grifted to her from different places. If Sherry doesn't see how she's headed for disaster, she's in for one heck of a ride. One heck of a ride because this is way too much. Way too much bad publicity for a show that hasn't even debuted yet. Now, if she was paying her own dues and we were seeing her work from the ground up, which is what a lot of people do. Look at me right now, working from the ground up, okay? My channel with 100,000 subscribers got deleted and here I am on this teeny channel working my way up. People respect that. And that is you literally carving out your own lane, which is so different from anybody else's. Even maybe your previous lane that got burnt down or washed away in the flood, hello. But honestly, if Sherry doesn't see the setup here, right? I don't know what to tell her. And again, I want to ask you all, okay? I want to ask you, what is Sherry Shepard's true differentiating factor? Like what, we can name a million things about Wendy as to why and how she was so captivating for so long. We can go on and on and on. You tell me what it is about Sherry that's really, that, that really gives her the bankability here. You, you tell me. Don't worry. I'll wait. Comment down below. Do you think that Nick is wrong for refusing to promote or give his stamp of approval to Sherry Shepard's, okay, eponymous show? I don't think that he's wrong. I think that he's completely um, well within his rights. I think he is, is correct. And I mean, you know, they might have even offered him a deal or a couple of dollars or we'll do this for you if you and he said no. You know what, you know, when people say no, when there's a deal or a benefit for them involved, it means that they have a moral compass that's intact. Someone says, it seems like they really wanted to transfer a hijack Wendy's followers. Exactly. But since they couldn't, they went for the next best thing that they could, which is Nick's. Exactly. Exactly. And just because they haven't grifted Wendy's uh, Twitter and her Instagram to someone else doesn't mean that they won't do it. I think that they're saving it for someone in the future. Cause like I said, Sherry already has her own official TV show, Twitter and Instagram. They're going to save it for someone else who comes along, who, who, who accepts the offer. Who's okay with riding off of the back and the coattails of someone else's years, decades long of hard work. So um, another question that I have, as we sit through this, 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 this moment of the final thoughts and the, the unanswered questions Okay, and thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on the video. I appreciate all y'all. Someone said crickets. What's what's her factor? What's her differentiating factor? Someone said nothing. It says Sherry's friends with everyone, which also can be a problem. And to be quite frank, that was a problem with it. Canada, why he couldn't last. If you are, and see, that, Wendy's not friends with everyone. So she's willing to give some critical, overly critical commentary, not so positive things to say about people, but keep it a buck you know, as far as her perspective, because she's not friends with everyone. But when you're friends with everyone in the industry, which Nick Cannon, you know, he's a networker. Who can he really be shady towards or or be really critical of when he's trying to make sure he can maintain his other business relationships? It's the same with Sherry. If she wants to play it safe and play it nice, she's never going to tell you how she really feels on Hot Topic. She's never going to be able to call something completely out of pocket or say they didn't have to do that or they shouldn't have done that. She's going to be too afraid that she's going to, to sever some sort of a, a, a business relationship that exists or doesn't exist yet. For people that like to play it safe, they're worried about all the people they could cross and all the bridges they could burn before they even get a chance to approach them. They want every opportunity around them. And so, you know, I, I do agree with someone that said... Um, that she wants to be friends with everyone. Someone says, I think that she'll get bigger interviews easier, but they will be less entertaining. I, I agree with that one too. I agree with that one too. Yeah, she's definitely not controversial. I don't find her asking any difficult questions. Um, you know, she strikes me as the type of person, Trey Songs would come up there and she wouldn't even ask him anything about his uh, 
controversial past. She wouldn't ask him anything about the the SA, you know what I'm saying, assault allegations and all, like she she would just try to only ask questions that are going to make the interviewee feel good and that's really just not and and not that Sherry is a journalist, but you got to know your audience and if you invite somebody that's controversial or known for a certain something problematic or whatever, we want to know that. And if they leave without you having asked that question, we're going to look at you funny. Like, hello, this is what we all wanted to know. She's going to stick to the script. Okay. She don't want to ruffle too many feathers. They said Sherry is giving school PTA. <laughs> President energy. Um, we never know. They said Sherry is more conservative on the view, often siding with Chow. So here's what I want to know from you all. Do you think that Sherry is going to have a long-lasting, successful career on her own self-titled TV show? Will she be as exciting or as entertaining as Wendy Williams? Let me know. Do you think the way Sherry Shepard was grifted other people's platform and spotlight, do you think that that is setting her up for disaster? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Any and all thoughts? I'm curious to know how you feel about it down below or in the chat. Okay. Again, if you haven't already subscribed to the backup channel, definitely make sure you do so. It is on the community tab, but it's also the third link down below in the description box. You'll see it. It'll say at TPJ Network. Click on that thing. Hit the notification bell on that thing. We're going to be there later tonight. Shout out to all my channel members because we did a members only yesterday. And we cut up, okay? We cut up talking about Tiger Woods and a lot of other stuff. Tiger Woods was the first man to... <sighs> Shout out to the channel members. Y'all know how it was. We had a good time. We cut up. I think we might cut up later when we talk about Orlando Brown on the backup channel as well. So make sure you subscribe to the TPJ Network. Third link down below in the description box. So look, y'all. I do want to give y'all a sticky note, but I also want to save it for a better show. Shut up. Should I? Should I? Okay. Should I? Thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on the video as well and checking out the community tab. Okay. I appreciate y'all. There are 118 of us here. There are 104 thumbs up. So there are quite a few of y'all who ain't hit the thumbs up button. Hit that daggone button. Or send a dollar. God dang it. I worked a long day at work to get off and get the, get this little show together for y'all. But no, I really wanted to talk about this because like I said, I study Wendy. I look up to Wendy um, because she really has paved the way when we talk about black women in media. Any black woman who wants to talk for a living on TV, radio, YouTube, podcast, whatever the case is, if you don't know, now you know. Wendy paved the way for you. She really did. There was no other black woman who was really blazing, blazing the headlines um, and, and just this long standing in general. Now, mind you, she done been through the ringer. Okay. She done been through the ringer. <laughs> but she's definitely paved the way. Yeah, Miss Mom. Yes, that 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 Orlando Brown situation. Okay. So I see some people asking for the sticky note. Okay, 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 okay. I, I, I give y'all a sticky note. Okay. Um let me give you a sticky note. What I'm going to do is, um, let me click this really quickly. I just need to, I need to, I need to cough. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. It was a YouTuber and shout out to her for this good detective work, honey. Uh, she's the one who went and was able to put two and two together. The plainest Jane, that's that's the person's name, the plainest Jane. I couldn't think of what their name was on the podcast, but I wanted to go ahead and shout them out. They're the ones who did the work. All right. So like I said, shout out to plainest Jane. She's the one who put that together. So Shekinah was not lying. So when Tiny came back on some, oh, she's making it up. Mm, sounded like Tiny's voice to me. Seen, seen, 
Okay, and we are back. Okay, just so y'all know, I, I I I get my shout outs and my content is it's lucrative. You know, Lovely T is is this close to one million? She basically did. You might as well just go ahead and say Lovely T got a million subscribers. All right. So I done had two folks with over and, and plenty more, right? But two folks with over a million subscribers, a million or more subscribers, shout your girl out and recognize and compliment my work on numerous occasions too. But that's listen. I don't like to brag, but sometimes I'll be having to remind myself. I look at my little 9,000 subscribers, and I'm not taking y'all for granted, but just understand the shock it was for me to lose my 100,000 subs because YouTube is a hater, right? Sometimes I'll be having to remind myself, girl, you you are. You are that sticky girl. Sticky, eh, okay? I know I do some good goddamn on work. Thank you. Okay, now let's get into today's sticky note. Today's sticky note, and if, if you're new around here, right, if you're a new subscriber and you haven't subscribed yet, click the button. If you're unfamiliar with what the sticky notes are, the sticky notes are handcrafted motivational notes, right, sticky notes that honestly I, I write to myself in my own journal to motivate me. I am my own life coach, <laughs> like, like in my head. If I'm not doing good, if I want to be doing better, I talk to myself like get up, work through it, whatever the case is. And I realized through sharing some of the motivational notes that I write to myself, people get a lot out of them. And, you know, my channel emoji being a pancake with, you know, some people call the information that they go over on their channel T. I call my Sarah. OK, so everything is sticky around here. Right. We, we got a breakfast vibe over here. So we call it sticky notes, which are my personal motivational quotes that I quote. I don't take quotes from motivational pages and all that other stuff. I craft them myself. That is what the sticky notes are, okay? And today's sticky note is this. Since y'all were requesting it in this video and the last one, all right, I'll give y'all one. Even though I wanted to wait to the next video till I do like an actual show. But today's sticky note is this. Don't let your refusal to be alone push you to accept mistreatment from people who have no desire to consider your needs, your comfort level, or your tolerance, people will begin to peep that you have a high tolerance for bullshit. And that only solidifies and draws attention to your low self-worth. Again, there's sometimes when we just don't want to be along and we just be like, "What? who can I talk to? How can I get out the house? We just be accepting shitty company because we don't want to be along. People peep that. They peep when you just can't sit still and you, you aren't able to find enjoyment out of me time. And being with yourself. And, and, and when you have a high tolerance for bullshit, oh, people peep that from a mile away so they can come over there and leech off of it. And it's, it's not about material because you can be broke financially and not have anything to give, but people are still going to leech off of your energy. You'll feel drained. You'll feel like this person is testing you too much, but maybe you'll tolerate it because you're feeling lonely. And th th this is coming from a place where I had to tell myself this. At a couple points, a couple different points in time in life, stop tolerating everything that presents itself to you. You can refuse to accept that person, that thing, that energy. So don't let your refusal to be alone push you to accept mistreatment from people who don't, they don't care. They don't care about your needs. They don't care about your tolerance levels. They don't care about your patience wearing thin. They don't care about your comfort levels. Right. And that's just energy, let alone for it to be a friend that you're always around. They always come over, they eat up all your stuff. Or y'all go out to eat and, oh, I left my wallet. Or y'all get on the phone and they just want to talk, 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 talk about their problems. And you get to talk about yours and it's oh, I, yours. And they're like, oh, I got to go. I can't listen to this. It's all, all about them sucking down whatever they can from you. Time, energy, a, an, an ear for them to vent, money, food, a ride to work. And you never get anything back. And life is not necessarily about tit for tat. But the imbalance, make it at least somewhere in the middle. If it's all the way like this and you feel depleted and you really can't even imagine, like you can't even name, what's the last thing that this person has, has done for me? Even if we just talking about care, basic care. If you, if we friends, you're supposed to care about me and my mood and my bad days. Cause I listen to you vent for an hour and a half. You know what I'm saying? Three hours total this week. Then I get to talking about my problems. All of a sudden you got to go. Oh no. Oh no. 
people will begin to peep these things. And I'm talking about regular friends and I'm also talking about dusty relationships. If you out here dating and you realize people, they just come in, talk to you, however, do whatever. And they be like, bye, they got what they want. Whole time where your needs met, because you definitely took care of theirs, right? And so it, it's important to consider, is the care mutual from those you feel connected or attached to? And, you know, th there are codependency issues out here. And so sometimes it may be painful to sever ties with people or things, but it's mandatory. <laughs> because if it is depleting you, I mean, didn't our grandmothers tell us we can't pour from an empty cup? It's true. It's true, it's true, it's true. And that's in every aspect. Familial relationships, your family. Romantic relationships, niggas and women. Friendships, anything. Think about that. Hell, your landlord, shoot. They want you to pay your rent on time every month, but your air been broke for a couple of weeks. Oh, no, nah. this is not an even exchange. This is the same fair and equal housing, <laughs> you know? Think about this. Think about this stuff. Okay. Thank you so much, Corey Lane, for the five dollars super chat. I really do appreciate that. Hey, shout out to Tawana Yvette. Thank you for coming through. I remember you from the old channel. I appreciate you for becoming a member again. I appreciate that. You were one of the first people who hit me up, and you were really livid that my old channel got deleted. And I appreciate that support from you. I really do. But look, this sticky note was for anybody out there. If you heard this sticky note about your refusal to be alone pushing you to accept mistreatment from people who don't care about your tolerance, your patience, your needs, your comfort level. If there's already a person or a thing that comes to mind when you hear this sticky note, then you already know what you need to do. You already know. And that's today's sticky note. And if it resonated with you, be sure to comment down below. I'm doing me. So I know it's real. <laughs> I do enjoy these sticky notes because I talk to myself all day long to, 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 to keep myself where I need to be. Okay. So look, Everybody, to all of my stickies in the audience watching, listen, be sure to tag me in your favorite trending topics on Twitter. Tag me on Instagram too. I'll be on Twitter most of the time, but I'll I, I be on Instagram too. So on Twitter, on Instagram, tag me in your favorite trending topics as they be popping off. We will drop in, okay? Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for checking the community tab. I really do appreciate people who check the community tab, engage with the community tab, because it definitely does mean a lot. Um. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the backup channel. It's the third link down below in the description box, okay? You'll see at TPJ Network. Click on that thing, subscribe to that thing, hit that notification bell for extra little razzle-dazzle, okay? Shout out to Ray Ray for joining the membership, okay? Thank you so much. If you are just joining the membership, be sure to also check out the community tab because there are um, members-only posts and that's where you can see the members-only videos as well. Anybody else who's not a member, and it's just one ninety nine to join the channel. It's really not much. Um, anybody who's not a member, they're unable to see all of the members only posts and the members only videos and members only content. We cut up backstage. OK, we cut up sometimes. We have their uh, therapy sessions where we come up. I dropped the link. We're on a panel just talking about childhood trauma, regular trauma. We really we really be bonding and stuff backstage. So if you have joined the channel, definitely make sure you check that community tab. Okay, I see some I'm doing me's in the comment section. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Shout out to Francis. Listen, don't forget to do something to relax today. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to eat some dinner and then I'll probably be on the backup channel later tonight. Once I eat, you know, sometimes I get the itis, but the backup channel, I'm excited to get over there and just kind of let my hair down a little bit so I don't have to you know, when I bring y'all content, I really care about formatting it correctly. I care about it being aesthetically pleasing. I care about it being polished. And I don't like to waste y'all time with just rummaging around. Um, and so on the backup channel, I plan to be a bit more laid back and to talk about things that are just a bit different than my regular content. But listen, let me know your thoughts on all the things that we discussed today. Sherry Shepard, is Nick Cannon wrong for refusing, okay, to endorse the Sherry Shepard show. Do you think Sherry Shepard is going to succeed or fail as she has been grifted someone else's goddamn on spotlight and platform? Okay. Um, and listen, just do you think that they're setting her up for disaster? Because I definitely do. I feel like they're setting her up for disaster. For sure, for sure. It's two different Ray Rays in the chat. 
That's interesting. That's they're like two different um two different profiles. But okay, that's cool. Shout out to all y'all having an amazing dinner. Oh, I asked y'all in the beginning of the video to tell me what y'all was eating for dinner, and I told y'all I would tell y'all what I'm having for dinner. So here's what I'm having. Don't judge me, okay? But I'm having a little bit of sushi left over from yesterday. I'm having a little piece of catfish that I got left over too. I got a little bit of chicken cheese steak downstairs too. And I'm going to just stop there because I feel like you're about to start judging me because it is a lot that I'm about to eat or a lot that I'm about to bite off of. You know what I'm saying? Two bites of the chicken cheese steak, a bite of the catfish, some of the sushi, you know, that that's how I'm getting down this evening. But listen, this has been an amazing show. Thank y'all so much for being here this evening. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I, I do appreciate it. Thank you for the engagement. Even if you come over here every day just to hit the thumbs down button because you don't like me, which it really ain't a lot of y'all. But if you just come over here to hit the thumbs down button, thank you for the engagement. If you came here to call me fat or to, you know, leave a negative comment, thank you for the engagement. I appreciate it. But also make sure after you subscribe that you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the celebrity or trend and syrup, okay? Y'all know I cover the black news and black culture commentary all the time and very well. You don't want to miss out anytime this bus is pulling up. Hit that notification bell. I've been hearing that a lot of people have not been getting all of their notifications so definitely make sure you've hit that thing and turned it to all notifications okay make sure y'all drop a pancake or two down below in that comment section and y'all stay beautiful black and blessed until the next video Deuces. but that's it if you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen or i'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video I'll see you there.